Hi and welcome to my playhouse. And today we um, we have a video that uh, that somehow didn't work out as planned. And uh, when I was doing the editing of the video, I figured out what was um, what was going on. And uh, well, sometimes when you're in the middle of it, you can't see the the forest for just trees. So uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have a look at that. Uh, first thing though, I would like to uh, thank my new patron. That is James Casley. James, and then the last name is K A C H L E. I don't know if I'm butchering that, but thank you very much for becoming a new patron. And the video that is in question is the video number 1266, where I connected, I think it was 150 something terabytes. To the tiny Lenovo machine back here and there are supposed to be a lot more storage there than what it could see and at the time I couldn't see what was going on but doing the editing I am um, I realized that all of these drives that I have in there and this is a Hewlett Packard Enterprise 10 terabyte drive with this weird white label here. Uh, it was all of these drives that wasn't showing up at all. I think there's 10 of them, nine or 10 of them. So there, I was missing almost 100 terabytes just because this drive was not showing up. And it probably has to do with this controller back here, not particularly liking this drive. Um, so, Patreon supporters, including James, um, has been, um, <laughs> helping me get a new controller for this and as um, I want to build something bigger along the way I got a a, 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 a bigger controller um, not physical but well you'll see it has two more ports so this is a 12 gigabit controller it should actually be an HPA so there is no rate thing on here and that is also why I think we can put it in instead of this controller and if we are lucky it will also see all of these duchy this is another one this is a bad one I have tested multiple of these and well I have a they have a really bad track record at my playhouse because there's so many bad ones because I have so many bad ones but I do get them from work uh, defective and sometimes I'm lucky and I get something that is usable to play around with so uh, today uh, we're just gonna first we're gonna see what uh, what it sees right now and then we're gonna try and put this awesome nice controller in which I have totally forgotten what it's called oh do, uh, do they help me out here they do not it's an LSI it's an we have a slight light problem there it would have been really awesome if they had put some kind of a label on it so you could actually see what kind of a controller you were dealing with but yeah it wasn't too expensive i will be sure to leave a link in the description i will though first have to dig up and see what i actually bought so this is why these youtube videos sometimes take way too long you put in the keyboard and it blinks and nothing oh something is happening oh maybe it got it now <laughs> finally that's the third port trying that maybe I should recap what we are actually doing here we have this tiny Lenovo here it's an M93 P and that one has an internal mini PCI port in there that we are connecting to this PCI Express external board here which is being powered from this power supply over here and well we are connecting it only with an PCI X1 port inside of the tiny Lenovo machine and uh, yeah that's what's going on so we we kind of have an X1 connection which well, the, the port down here is an X16 so we have 1 16th of the connection that we could have on a normal one but normally you would not be able to connect to a PCI card in this machine at all they do have some models where you can put in a an internal uh, card but this one does not have it so we are putting it externally and uh, yeah this card worked 
and um, we can actually also see here uh, this is Windows 7 in Danish sorry about that I haven't renewed that but it does see the controller here smart array controller and that's the one that we are looking at so let's see what drives it sees oh did yeah we forgot it is connected to these two boxes down here which is <laughs> Yeah, there is 48 drives here, so this tiny machine has plenty of um, storage. So here we have the disk manager, and we have all the drives that it can see. You can see there's, the uh, first one is the disk zero, that's the boot drive, that's internally in the machine. And then we have, these are three terabytes, there is a, quite a few of those, and then we have 9.3 that's a 10 terabyte drive and a 10 terabyte so there is two 10 terabyte drives in there that it does see so those must be of a different model and then there's 12 and another 12 and another 12 so there is three and that adds up there's three 12 terabyte drives in there and they show up perfectly and then we are back to three terabyte drives for the rest of them there and we end on drive number 39 so yeah as there is 48 drives plus the boot drive and it's not seeing those I am probably the firmware for the rake controller could be upgraded and maybe that would help so but we're just gonna try and replace the rake controller with a HBA controller, we already saw that. This very nice and beefy one looks very good. Eight. I bought one with four ports because my idea is to um, to have this tiny machine see uh, one petabyte at some point. But today we just need to uh, have it see all the drives in these drive enclosures. And as there is a lot of these 10 terabytes, in my other enclosure well um, we need to fix that issue because it would probably not see those in the other controller if we do not so just while we have the system booting <laughs> we can set some lighting and I, and I can show you these drives that are not showing up hopefully uh, I have no idea what sits where so we're just gonna pop some out and we are in luck this is one of the drives that it does not see a 10 terabyte here is another one also a 10 terabyte I think the 12 oh we might have we might have 12 I have um, the, these trays have the, the right size on them and I believe that I put 12 in here so this is a 12 terabyte. It's also a white label one, um, but the 12 terabyte shows up perfectly, no problem whatsoever. It's the 10 terabyte that does not show up. And in here I have some other 10 terabytes that does show up. I have no idea where they're located, but we could, oh, <laughs> is this a 12? Oh, this is a 12 terabyte. That's, you can see, a, a different layout of the drive it's a different model but it's the 12 terabytes had no problems it's the 10 terabytes that has pro oh, and we are lucky here we have one of the 10 terabytes that actually work it says 10 terabyte there and this label is okay and this is a Hitachi drive that is okay Okay, let's change the controller and get on with it and take my lighting down. Here is the controller and we're gonna putting it in over here. So, disconnecting the disk shells. Oh, the disk shells are NetApp uh, DS4243s. It's a very well used uh, system. A lot of people have been using those for multiple uh, cool projects so I'm gonna put this in I guess we'll... I have some limitations my cable is only 
this long <laughs> because uh, this is a very special cable to go into the NetApp boxes and become 12 gigabit. They're, they're kind of not that common. I was limited in the amount of lengths that I could get. But I think we're good to go. We can now try this out. I have no idea if this works at all. I hope so. Uh, I purchased it, but I haven't tested it before now. So the PCI card needs external power, and that comes in here. It's a six pin connector, and it goes down to this power supply down here. And what I do, I shut, I turn off the power supply when I turn off the PC. Uh, there. Turn that on. And onto the PC, and turn that on. And, well, the PCI card lights up. Do we have any? I do see a green LED down here off the card. And Windows is booting. That was quick. Uh, with the other card, with the other card it took forever to check out all the drives. It didn't do that. That's not great. Okay, um, no drives showed up. And in here the, the SAS controller um, is missing drivers. So I need to I'll connect some internet to it and see if it will figure this out itself. Uh, we might run into the issue that Windows 7 is too old for this, but, but let's see if that's the case. Okay, a tiny little bit of progress. I managed to find LSI adapter drivers for SAS 2. And um, well, this card kind of, uh, it's like two SAS controllers glued on to one SAS controller with some switching between them. So it shows up as two SAS controllers and I found some drivers that it would um, would take and it says that it's good. It still doesn't show anything so uh, the SAS controller that I purchased here might be disabled. And the controller down here becomes so warm that I've uh, put a little fan on it. Uh, right now it's turned off because I'm gonna try it in the server instead. So I moved in here and I put the, the controller in this server and it does show up here. I installed a Mega Raid uh, on here. So let's, let's remove that. We can see over here I have two controllers and they say that they are SAS 920616E. That is the controller that I have in there. Then I have an, another one H220 down there. That's a Hewlett Packard one. Um, it shows up in here, so it's not completely dead. So in here the controller shows up. Okay, I actually already have one of them in there. That uh, Hewlett Packard controller that I'm running in there. That's apparently the same driver that is used for that. Um, I have tried, oh, I'll just minimize this, to run something called uh, Storytly. Storytly. Uh, 64 64 bit and um, that's a somewhat older version and then I have one from from Dell because the the card that I purchased it said that it was a Dell storage controller um, I've run both of them it could be hard to see I've run the first the storage clip and that one is from 2018 it sees absolutely zero controllers and it recognizes the server as a server 2016. Then I have run the the one from from Dell uh, and the show. That one is from 2021, and it recognizes the server as a Windows Server 2022. And it sees absolutely zero controllers. So um, yeah, hmm. Okay, it's not going very well. I have been messing around with different stuff, uh, some DOS commanders here, SAS to Flash is able to see the RAID controllers down here, I got something else called LSI Utility, um, well there's another YouTuber out of server that has been using that in a video two years ago to mess around with exactly the same card. But, well, that one isn't available in, um, I can't find that in the right version. I need a, well, he's using a version 1.72 and I can only find the 1.71. So, 
yeah, this is not going well. So I've moved out here again, and um, yeah, under cooling, this has been connected, and now it's even worse. Well, it's actually not, but the command prompt software here is not able to see the see um, any adapters found, and it was able to see that in uh, the server. It actually had three, three of them in there. So yeah, and this is a pretty new version. So it's actually not the newest, uh, but I think I'll have to give up for now. So this is an awful video, a huge step backwards for mankind. <sighs> yeah, that's how it goes sometimes. Apparently there is something weird with that um, rate controller that I purchased, which is irritating. It was supposed to just be good and do awesome stuff. And I'm not entirely sure what is going on here. It might be the rate controller that does not like to only have an X1 connection to the computer down here. Who knows? Or it might be um, that the rate controller is disabled in some way. That was, well, the art of server. Another YouTuber he had a card like this and um, it came out of some kind of a storage system and all the ports was disabled in there. The rate controller looked normal but it was just disabled and and it kind of feels a bit like what's going on here. Like the rate controller is there but all the ports are just disabled inside. So I need to figure that out. And um, yeah, I would very much like to do it in Windows because I am not very good at Linux. So admittedly, it really sucks when I spent all day and gotten absolutely nowhere. But that's how it goes sometimes. As I say, um, smart people learn from their own mistakes. Brilliant people learn from other people's mistakes. So uh, there's a lot to learn here. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching my videos, do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day, bye bye.